Howdy, folks. This is Vile Mike here, and with me, of course, is my vile child, Caddy Knight. What up, people? To make things a little interesting, Caddy here helped me write this script. It has nothing to do with the fact that she complained about a small error in writing last episode. It's not my fault you kept writing things wrong. Only once, as far as the audience knows. We open with a shot of the Enterprise above an unexplored planet. On the planet we have... Oh my god! Alien poppers! It's just a dog in a fursuit. But I want it! Anyway, Sulu is holding the alien dog while Kirk plays with its tail, expositioning about how cold it gets on the planet at night. When suddenly... Aww, a clumsy crew member falls down, goes boom. He gets a widow cut on his hand. So Kirk sends him to the sick bay for a bandit. Scotty beams the clumsy crewman up, but the yellow dust covering him causes issues with the transporter. When it's time for Kirk to beam up, he seems to be fine, but is a little woozy. A second Kirk beams up onto the ship with evil lighting. Must be... Dun dun dun! Evil Kirk. You can tell he's evil because his eyes look weird. No, that's just Shatner. So, Kirk is the villain of the week. Pretty much. After the opening credits, evil Kirk is looking over the transporter controls evilly. And when this crewman shows up, of course he does not notice anything acting strange or anyone acting strange. Add right, to the counter. Good Kirk and Scotty enjoy a little banter before Kirk enters his quarters, only to find Rand working on the ship's manifest, but he curtly dismisses her. Aww, is Kirky gonna take a little nap? You're acting really strange today. <laughs> McCoy is patching up the clumsy crewman, using the tried-and-true medical treatment of vacuuming his hand and using a giant spray bottle filled with magic science juice to heal him. Evil Kirk enters and demands brandy from McCoy. Grabbing him by the neck. Huh. Evil Kirk wants booze. Why does that not surprise me? And McCoy just gives him the bottle. Not running a scan or anything. Our chief medical officer, people. Add it to the counter. I uh, think... Oh, sorry. That's my line, father. I think the crew not noticing, you know, their captain acting strange. It, it's going to be a regular occurrence in this episode, isn't it? Probably. Kirk is boozing it up when he sees Rand's quarters. Shirtless Shatner alert. Shirtless Shatner alert. Spock is checking on Kirk, and apparently McCoy is competent. He actually did find evil Kirk acting strange. Remove it from the counter. In the transporter room. And puffers! And evil alien puffers. And evil alien puffers are so cute! His little horn and sharp teeth. What did I do wrong raising you? You introduced me to anime and sci-fi. Oh. Well, um, <laughs> apparently when they beamed up the alien dog, it was split into two creatures. One is docile and gentle, the other one mean and fierce. So cute! Uh, anyways, Miss Beehive enters her quarters and, oh no, she is going to be red-skirted by evil Kirk. No, I think something worse is going to happen. Evil Kirk is like Charlie. Horny from his beehive, and does not take no for an answer. There's no real way to sugarcoat this one, folks. Is this is a scene where basically Kirk, granted it's evil Kirk, attempts to rape Yeoman Rand. She tries to fight him off, even managing to scratch his face, and she runs towards the door. And as it opens, she sees another crewman, yells for him to get Mr. Spock, but as the crewman runs off, Evil Kirk gives chase and knocks the crewman out. This is an amazing scene, to be honest, but it is hard to watch. It could have been played for laughs. It could have been slapstick to alleviate the tension. But instead, Star Trek actually had the balls to have their main character do a scene where he attempts to rape a woman. Not only that, but have the woman fight back and not just be a victim because she is pretty and blonde but doing her best to fight off her attacker, even if that attacker is her superior. Where it falls flat is the scene after, where both Kirk and Spock interview an obviously traumatized Rand. If Rand is saying the captain tried to rape her, he has no 
place being there during the investigation or being part of said investigation. It also has some other implications that could be troubling. We as the audience know that there are two Kirks, one evil, one not. Rand does not. So when Rand is accusing Good Kirk of rape, she is wrong. That was not her attempted rapist. So we sympathize with Good Kirk. As he is being accused of a rape, he did not commit. But again, we as the audience know that someone did attempt to rape Rand, someone who looked like the captain. There was even a witness. But her story does not match all the facts. Good Kirk does not have the scratches to his face. And I'm sure many women or men who have been in similar circumstances to Rand would feel overwhelmed and not sure of themselves. Rape and sexual assault is an important topic. And if you need to talk to someone in the U.S., you can call the National Sexual Assault Hotline at one 800 656 4673. All right. Sorry for getting all serious, folks. Anything you want to add, Caddy? Honestly, I completely agree. There's no point within that area I have any point in disagreeing with. Okay, maybe I did raise you right. All right, I'm getting off the soapbox and getting back to the episode. Spock assumes the captain is innocent and suspects an imposter is aboard while the crew on the planet is freezing. In the transporter room, Scotty explains they cannot beam up the away team without making more evil doubles. Because the Enterprise only has one working transporter room, not four like the tech manual will say, and the shuttle set has not been built yet, so they can't use that either. Spock suggests the search parties to look for evil Kirk, but not to kill him. Nor does he think that Kirk should tell the whole truth to the crew, as it could undermine his ability to command them in the future. But Good Kirk is getting a little forgetful, and he orders Spock to remind him of anything he forgets. Basically a Vulcan, remember all? Hey, I just noticed. Good Kirk is wearing the ugly green uniform, while Evil Kirk has the normal yellow one. What do you think of that, Caddy? That just means Evil Kirk has a better fashion sense. Eh, it's probably also easier to distinguish between Good Kirk and Evil Kirk at a glance. Also, Spock holding the alien dog is now Caddy's background desktop image. Shut it! On the bridge, Kirk tells the crew about the imposter Kirk over the intercom. He says the imposter can be ID'd by scratches on his face, and says the search parties need to report to Spock. Spock reminds Kirk to tell the search parties to set their phasers to stun, because otherwise the crew would kill Evil Kirk. Smart move. After Good Kirk makes this announcement, Evil Kirk starts ranting about how he is the captain, and starts destroying and chewing the scenery like only Shatner can. Hammy Shatner is my favorite Shatner. I am Captain Kirk. I'm Captain Kirk. I'm Captain Kirk. I said I'm Captain Kirk. No, I'm Captain Kirk. I'm Captain Kirk. Evil Kirk starts putting on makeup because makeup is obviously evil. No, he just has better fashion sense. I told you this earlier. Evil Kirk attacks a random crew member after tricking him into giving him his phaser, but he does not kill him. In a conference room, Good Kirk is contacting Sulu on the planet. Sulu tells him it's getting colder. Spock says they've already tried to beam down heaters, but they were duplicated and would not work. Someone calls via the comms and tells Kirk and Spock about the earlier crewman that was disarmed and attacked. Now they know that Evil Kirk is armed. Spock suggests they try to think like Evil Kirk, to catch him, and decide to go to the engineering. In engineering, Good Kirk and Spock look for Evil Kirk, weapons drawn. Evil Kirk is apparently part monkey, jumping on the tops of the equipment. Evil Kirk jumps down and confronts Good Kirk. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Which one? The evil one, duh. But Spock said not to. Stupid fucking pacifism. Good Kirk tries to talk down Evil Kirk. Evil Kirk shoots anyway, but Spock comes to the rescue. Yes, fuck! Another nerf pinch takedown. It's sick pay. McCoy suggests strapping down Evil Kirk. <laughs> Do the line without laughing, father. In sick, in sick bay, McCoy suggests strapping down Evil Kirk. 
And Spock hypothesizes about how the evil and good sides of Kirk are needed for the original Kirk to function, each having certain traits the other needs to survive. Sulu calls again, telling Kirk it's getting even colder and requesting a pot of hot coffee to be lowered via rope. Scotty calls up, saying he found the trouble with the transporters. But even though the landing party is freezing to death, he cannot fix it in less than a week. Cue commercial break. This channel is sponsored by SD GameSwap. If you're into nerd stuff, you might find something you like there. They have books, movies, video games, toys and collectibles, and they even do consignment. They are also on Facebook, so go buy something. Links in the description. SD Game Swap commercial! I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> After the commercial break, Good Kirk laments about becoming more indecisive, while Sulu uses a phaser to heat up rocks and cracks a joke about the coffee taking too long. So, phasers are weapons, cutters, and heaters. Wow, they're like Swiss Army laser guns. That's awesome. I want one. Dad, can I have one? No. <laughs> Why not? Maybe for Christmas. Yay! Evil Kirk is screaming in sick bay. McCoy says it's because that due to the duplication process, both halves are now dying. Good Kirk argues with himself, literally, and McCoy gives him a drink. I guess this doctor is a bartender. In the transporter room, Scotty has apparently done some miracle work to get the transporter working again. And Spock helps figure out a way to recombine the duplicates. They test the recombination process on the alien dog. Space PETA is pissed. So am I! The alien poppers are so cute! But Spock and McCoy examine the alien dog. Unfortunately, he's dead, Jim. After another commercial break, Spock is doing the captain's logs. Something about that feels so right. In sickbay, McCoy examines the dead alien dog, and Spock argues that Kirk would probably survive the process because he can understand what is happening to him. He compares the two Kirks to his human and Vulcan sides, both at war with each other yet needing each other, and his intellect keeping them in check. Well, good Kirk... We've been saying good Kirk all episode. You can <laughs> say it correctly. We know this. <laughs> Apparently I can't, though. While good Kirk checks on evil Kirk, Sulu Sickle reports from the surface, he's basically complaining that is <laughs> cold. Evil Kirk tricks good Kirk and knocks him unconscious, scratching his face and putting on a green uniform to match. He then creepily hits on Rand and goes to the bridge, where he orders the Enterprise to leave orbit, abandoning Sulu and the away team. But... Everyone seems to notice that this is not the real Kirk for once, and McCoy brings the good Kirk to the bridge, causing evil Kirk to go nuts. Nah, that's just Shatner. Evil Kirk rats about... Ra rats? Rants. <laughs> I said rats. I can't talk. Evil Kirk rants, but he is subdued and brought to the uh, transporter room, where Scotty does some more transporter magic. Well, original Kirk is back, and Sulu Sickle and the rest of the away team are saved. Original Kirk thanks Spock, apologizes to Rand, well, sort of, and takes his rightful seat in the captain's chair. So, what did you think? Okay. Overall, episode was good. Enjoyed it. Yeah. One thing, though. The thing with Rand pissed me off. Third, oh my god, I love the alien popper! There are two episodes that are kind of like sequels to this episode's premise. One where Riker has a transporter clone, except he's not evil, he's just been marooned on a planet for years. But there's also a great episode of Voyager, one of the few, where Tuvok and Neelix get merged and make a being known as Tuvix. And the episode hinges on the rights of this new being versus the rights of the beings that make him up. At the end of this episode, Evil Kirk says he wants to live, separate from Good Kirk, and is willing to do anything to stay that way, but he's dying and needs to be merged back. Good Kirk and the rest of the power trio want original Kirk back. But whose rights are more important? I think this may warrant a lore video. Hint, hint, Mr. Reloaded. Do I have to review those two? We can discuss your contract to the end of Season 3 of TOS. Ah. With that, we leave you, folks. Until next time, when we discuss Mud's Women. Oh, uh, oh God. Anyways, bye bye And don't forget... Like, comment, and subscribe!
three, two, one, let's go. Oh, you got to do it! Now that's just Shatner.